How you doing? Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new, welcome to the channel. My name's Shawnee Bleak, and today we've got a very special video because I'm doing a collaboration with Matt from Badger Workshop. We've decided to set ourselves a little challenge to make a small box. And it was kind of an idea to see what two makers would come up with, their own styles and their own workshops, what kind of variations would you get. So once you watch my build, I put a link in the description down below to Matt's video, so please check him out. I got the opportunity to meet Matt twice at Maker Central last year, and he is a really nice guy. He's got a very entertaining channel. I watch all his videos, and I encourage you to watch them as well because I think you might enjoy them. And if you come over from Matt's channel, welcome. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And yeah, so what I'm planning on doing for my box is I want to make a turned box. Quite like the look of them. I think they're very clean and neat, and you don't get a lot of circular boxes, so I'm going to go for that. I managed to find a nice bit of walnut in my wood pile. Uh, I know it's a bit of a mess. It has got a crack down the middle, so I think it's perfect for a few small boxes. And I'm thinking about inlaying a lighter wood disc uh, on the top of the box. I've got this lovely piece of bird's eye maple that I think would be a nice contrast with the walnut. So I'm really looking forward to this build. I think it's gonna turn out really nice. Let's get straight into it. So the first thing I did was plane one side of this big chunk of walnut. It's a really nice size, but it's not long enough to kind of use in furniture, so it's perfect for some small bowl blanks, or in this case, a small box blank. So at the mitre saw, what I'm doing is just knocking off the corners, and that's to get it slightly more circular, so it's quicker to get round on the lathe. And the way I'm attaching it onto the lathe is just with hot glue, and that's actually really strong um, if you don't want to uh, create a tenon at the beginning. Uh, also, uh, double-sided tape works well, or if you put masking tape on a face plate and on the, the bolt blank, you can put super glue in between them, and that works really well. Uh, that's only a temporary way of holding onto a lathe, and uh, that allows you to turn a tenon on the end, and that's what I've done here. So I'm just mounting it into the jaws, uh, tightening it up, and that gives me a much stronger join so that I can start hollowing out the inside of the box. But before I started to hollow out the inside of the box, I uh, wanted to create the groove in the lid uh, for the inlay uh, bird's eye maple disc. So I just used a parting tool to go all the way along, uh, going down about five mil. Now I'm using a very thin parting tool, um, which heats up very quickly. So I kept on uh, dabbing it in water to cool it down. And then I just finished off the cut on the bandsaw. So before I started hollowing out the inside of the box, I wanted to inlay the disc in. So when that's gluing and drying up, I can start hollowing out the, the inside of the box. So I'm just cutting it uh, round on the bandsaw. Again, I hot glued it onto the lathe. And I'm just using a bowl gouge here to uh, true it up. And I just kept on taking very light passes until I got a perfect fit. Now this was quite a thick bit of bird's eye maple, so I'm parting it in two trying to not get sawdust in my face and um, parting it in two will allow me to use the other half or another box in the future and I just put it through the drum sander to get it flat on both sides. Now on the disc I actually turned a very subtle taper so when I'm clamping it into the groove uh, the join all the way around will be perfectly snug because it's tapering in so now I'm gluing the disc in, uh, I used a lot of clamps so I get a really tight join, that's going to be the main feature of the box so I want it to be perfect. So now that's in the clamps I can focus on hollowing out the inside of the bowl. I just started turning the kind of lip on the edge which will uh, clip onto the lid and uh, now I'm hollowing out the inside. And this is a pencil and ruler trick I learned where if you want to know how deep you're going, you can put a straight edge up against the rim of the bowl, or in this case the box, and then uh, put a pencil uh, down the middle. And then if you lift it up and take it to the outside of the bowl, you can kind of gauge how deep you're going. And that really helped in uh, this build because you don't want to make the bottom wall too thin or you definitely don't want to burst through. So now I've turned the whole inside of the box, I sanded it to 240 grit and now I'm using some chestnut cut and polish which is 
a great product if you want to sand your turning pieces to a very high grit without having to worry about the fine dust particles in the air. Uh, it sands the bowl without the dust. So it's a great product. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to check that out. And now I'm changing the chuck jaws to the remounting jaws so then I can uh, clamp the lid on the lathe without having to make a tenon or marking it because these are kind of soft pads which kind of grip the outside of the lid and allow me to hollow it out without damaging it. Remounting jaws are a great product uh, in wood turning. I highly recommend getting a, a set of them. Also allows you to remove tenons on the bottom of bowls if you don't like the look of them. And what I'm doing here is very carefully uh, taking little by little off until the lid fits perfectly. And as you can see there, I've got a very tight join. And that's what I want because when I sand the lid, uh, I'll sand it back to a perfect fit. Now, if you're doing this and you go slightly too far and it's a bit too loose, don't worry. When you add a finish, I'm going to be adding a hard wax oil finish, which is quite thick. And uh, if you layer up the finish, that will kind of make uh, the rim thicker and that in turn will make the lid fit nicer and not wobble. Now what I'm doing with the bowl gouge is kind of turning a very subtle dome on the lid. I didn't want it to be perfectly flat because the outside of the box is perfectly flat. So I thought having some curve on the lid uh, will be a really nice feature. So that's uh, the inside of the lid and the box turned and also the top. Now it's time to finish off the outside. So I wrapped up a bit of kitchen roll and put that in between the MDF pad and tailstock. So that will protect the top of the lid. And what I did here was got uh, some sandpaper stapled to a flat piece of wood. And that will allow me to sand the outside of the box perfectly flat. As long as the board you're using is flat then uh, it will sand that exact profile on the outside. Again, I'm using some chestnut cut and polish all over the box on the inside and out. And uh, I'm loving the, you know, the, the glisten it gets when the light hits certain parts of the grain, it really shines. And this is what I was talking about with the remounting jaws, how you can turn the tenon away and make the bottom of your turned pieces really neat and smooth. And it also hides every way uh, that the piece could be made. If your client is picking up a piece and they don't see any way of mounting it onto a machine, um, it kind of creates a lovely mystery of how the piece was made. And now it's time to add a bit of a finish, a hard wax oil finish, which will really make the bird's eye maple pop and uh, the walnut glisten as well. I really like a hard wax oil finish because you can also buff it uh, even the oil itself gives it a shiny look, but if you want it really glossy, you can buff it after. That is my little kind of keepsake box. It could be for a watch, uh, for bracelets, for jewellery, uh, for cufflinks, really anything, keys, any coins, you know, anything you really want to put in. I'm very happy with how this has come out. I, I learned a lot through this project. It looks quite simple, but there is two very difficult bits of this build. Uh, first off is the inlaid disc on the top, getting that perfectly 
fitting uh, with no gap all the way around it is quite a challenge. I couldn't be happier with the fit of this inlay. There's no gap all the way around it. And the lid, getting that to fit really nicely is also quite difficult. So I'm happy with the fit. I really like the wood. It was quite a big bit of uh, scrap walnut, so I think I'll be making a few more boxes. At this point, I haven't seen what Matt makes, but when I'm editing this, uh, I will have seen it. And if you want to see what it looks like, it looks like this. And if you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description down below to his half of the collaboration. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Matt makes and see what type of box he comes up with. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe. Please subscribe to Matt. Like the video. If you've got any questions, comment down below. Or if you just want to chat, comment down below. I'll reply to all your comments. And yeah, thank you for my patrons who enabled me to spend more time in the workshop making more videos for you. So thank you, Matt, for this collaboration. I'm going to watch your video right now. And to everyone else, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.